happening right now. What we're dealing with here in New Mexico isn't anything compared to what the rest of the country has in store today. Liz? Yeah, take a look at this. NASA images from the National Space Station show what is now Hurricane Arthur. People on North Carolina's Hatteras Island are being told to pack up and leave. But evacuations for surrounding areas are not yet mandatory. However, authorities are recommending it. Hurricane Arthur is now a Category 1 hurricane. Meanwhile, in the Outer Banks, stores are seeing a run on gasoline, generators, lanterns, and flashlights. We will be monitoring Hurricane Arthur closely and have more for you throughout the morning. Then we go now to Iowa City, Iowa, where floodwaters are forcing people from their homes there. There's now a state of emergency because of rising water in the Iowa River and reservoir. Some have left for higher ground during mandatory evacuations. Others are being safe and leaving on their own. And in a historic Mississippi River town, trying to fight floodwaters is being hamstringed by budget problems. The town of Clarksville says it cannot afford to pay for sandbags, even though rising wa river waters have already caused some flooding. And there is a threat of more to come. All right, that's the sound of people getting ready for the big Boston Pops 4th of July concert. It is set to go tomorrow despite the threat from Hurricane Arthur. So folks there are keeping an eye on the weather and they're doing it for a lot of different reasons. Rain is a factor for the orchestra. If the rain is hot, uh, coming down hard enough that it comes into the hat shell, then it affects your instruments. For the fireworks, we have a sustained wind of 20 miles an hour, which is pretty high. Um, that's when we cannot fire by law the fireworks. So today, organizers will make contingency plans for tomorrow's big party. All right, 503 new this morning, a small plane crash at the airport in Las Vegas, New Mexico. Yeah, this happened at about 7 last night. The Las Vegas Daily Optic quotes the city police chief, Christian Montano, saying that there were five people in the plane. The pilot is in critical condition. Four passengers sustained non-critical injuries. Little other information is available so far this morning. The Roswell Middle School shooter is getting the maximum sentence. Yeah, Mason Campbell's being put away until he is 21 and during his sentencing hearing in court in Roswell yesterday, he apologized for shooting up the gym back in January. I'm very sorry for my actions. This is not what I meant to do. I'm very sorry, Kendall, Nathaniel. The judge ruled we could not show young Campbell's face. Yesterday in court, he did face Kendall Sanders and Nathaniel Tavar as the two kids he shot. After Campbell apologized, those two also spoke. That was quite terrifying. I didn't want to see a kid's face that almost killed me. I thought he was pretty sincere, and I accept his apology. Since January, we have all been wondering why did Campbell fire off a blast of bird shot from a shotgun into a crowd at the Brendo Middle School gym? The motive was confirmed yesterday. Sadly, bullying. And Campbell says he was tormented on a daily basis, saying he was constantly teased and even slammed to the ground. And just four days before the shooting, Campbell wrote in a notebook he was so sick of the bullying, he was going to end it. I'm going to stab him in the back of the shoulder. And then as he turns around, I'm going to slice his throat and then take him out of his misery. Instead, Campbell decided to smuggle a shotgun into the school and randomly fire into the gym bleachers. Campbell could not be sentenced as an adult because of his age. He is just 13. You have to be 14 to be sentenced as an adult here in New Mexico. We now know the name of the victim in the city's latest fatal hit and run accident. This morning, Albuquerque police are looking for two drivers in connection with the case. The hit and run happened Tuesday night on San Mateo and Aztec between Comanche and Candelaria. A witness says a van and then a Lexus hit a pedestrian and then both vehicles took off. The victim, 50 year old Donald Gonzalez, died at the hospital. There have been four deadly hit and runs in and around Albuquerque since early June. So far, there's only been one arrest in all the cases. Well, thanks to a whole lot of firefighters and better weather, crews are making progress slowing the Diego fire in the Hemis. More than 700 firefighters are beating this one down, and they're getting some help with the rain and the humidity. The fire has gotten just a few hundred acres bigger since Tuesday and is now 30% contained. Overall, it scorched 3,600 acres in the Santa Fe National Forest near Coyote. Lightning started this fire about two weeks ago. Well, back here in Albuquerque, a new plan to clean up the Kirtland Air Force Base fuel spill is set to be in place by the end of this summer. 
Assistant Air Force Secretary uh, Kathleen Ferguson was in Albuquerque this week meeting with the state's leaders. She says the Air Force has submitted its investigative report on this matter and is waiting on the State Environment Department to approve a long-term cleanup plan. She says the base has moved forward with a temporary plan, including cleaning up 3 million pounds of hydrocarbons. Well, that radiation leak at WIP from back on Valentine's Day has led to 115 people getting laid off by the contractor responsible for packing and shipping waste to WIP from Los Alamos. Energy Solutions contract with Lanel expired Monday, and thousands of barrels of radioactive waste were supposed to be gone from the lab. But as you know, WIP has been closed since the leak again in February, and no waste can be shipped there. The leak has been traced to a barrel that Energy Solutions packed.